Good morning and welcome to Lake Como Church of Christ Live. We appreciate you joining us on this morning. We don't take your presence here today online for granted. We know that there's a whole lot of other places you could be, but we thank God that he brought you to this space at this time. Listen, I want to let you know you got the best seat in the house this morning. So whatever, whatever you're doing, wherever you are in your space this morning, we want you to get yourself ready to worship God. The Bible declares that this is the day the Lord has has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. If you are happy to be here this morning, go ahead and type amen, give us a high five, or wave your hand, or do something to let us know you are here with us. We're getting ready to go right into our worship service, but before we do that, we want to bow for a silent moment of meditation, followed by a word of prayer. Great God of heaven, we come with our heads bowed and our hearts humbled, Lord, to tell you thank you for being our God. Lord, you are good, you are great, and you are greatly to be praised. Lord, we thank you for being our God even in a situation like this where we are all in a space where we are doing things that we don't normally do in ways we don't normally do them. But God, we thank you for being a God who is good not just some of the time, but you are a God who is good all the time. So today, Lord, here we are to worship you, to bow down and to say that you are our king and beside you there is no other. So, Lord, right now, we ask that if there's anything in, going on in our lives, if there's anything going on in our heads, if there's anything on our minds that would keep us from worshiping you in spirit and in truth, use your power to move those things out of the way so that we can give you right now all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Lord, Come into this space, send your spirit, show up and show out so that the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts will be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. This is our prayer in Jesus name. Let us all say amen. amen. The psalmist said in Psalm 100, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Praise God and let us worship him. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises to our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. Let it rise. Let the song. Let the songs of the Lord. Rise among us, let the songs of the Lord rise among us, let the praises to our King rise among us, let rise. Oh, 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 oh. let it rise, let the glory, let the glory of the Lord. Rise among us, let the glory of the Lord rise among us, let the praises to our King rise among us, let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. let it rise, let the glory, let the glory of the Lord. Rise among us, let the glory of the Lord rise among us, let the praises to our King rise among us, let it rise. Oh, 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 let it rise, let the love, let the love of the Lord rise among 
among us, let the Lord of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises to our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. Let it rise. Let the spirit, let the spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises to our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 let it rise. I have everything I I have everything I need. I have everything I need. The great I am provides for me. The great I am provides for me. I have everything I need. I have everything I need. I have everything I need. The great I am. The great I am provides for me. The great I am provides for me. You, you are my strength when I am weak. Yes, you are. You are my strength when I am weak. Oh, yes, you are my strength when I am weak. The great I am. The great I am. Provides for me, the great I am. Provides for me. You are my strength when I am weak. You are. You are my strength when I am weak. Oh yes, you are my strength when. We the great I am, the great I am, provides for me, for me, for me, the great I am, provides for me, the great I am, the great I am, that I am, he's everything that I am. The great I am, that I am, is more than enough for me. The great I am, that I am, is everything that I need. The great. You're whoever I need you to be. You're the I am, you are. You're whoever I need you to be. You're the I am, you are. You're whoever I need you to be. You're the I am, you are. 
You're whoever I need you to be. You're the I am you are. Yes, you're whatever I need you to be. You're the I am you are. You're whatever I need you to be. You're the I am you are. You're whatever I need you to be. You're the I am you are. I have everything I need. I have everything I need. I have everything I need. The great I am. The great I am. Provides for me. The great I am provides for me. Give me this mountain, give me this mountain, give me this mountain, Lord, give me this mountain. of uncertainty. Father, we know that we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. And we'll continue, Father, to praise you and give you honor through these uncertain times. 
Father, we ask that you would give us for all our shortcomings. Help us to know that through it all, everything is placed in your hands. And Father, although we can't see what's going on in this world, we know that you have control. Continue to hold us, Father. Continue to keep us. And Father, as we're about to go further into this worship service, we ask that whatever it is that's heavy on our hearts, that we just be able to pick those things up and set them aside so that we can receive your word and that we can apply it to our lives so that the world, the sin lost world can see you through us, can see you through us and that we may be able to have those lost people come and say, what must we do to be saved? We ask that you continue to bless us, Father. Continue to watch over this man's servant that he's bringing this word to us that we may be able to accept it and to apply it to our lives to become better people. And it's in Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. could never do for ourselves. It's in this moment that we have come to celebrate what we call the Holy Communion. I want to encourage you to take your mind back to the place called Calvary where Jesus hung, bled, suffered, and died to buy our pardon. My brothers and my sisters, as we partake of the Lord's Supper on this morning, I want you to know that this broken body is what Jesus sacrificed on that old rugged cross. This bread that we will partake of this morning represents his body that hung on that cross. And this fruit of the vine represents the blood that was shed for many 
for the remission of sins. And the reason why we celebrate, my brothers and my sisters, is because when we take the Lord's Supper, we do demonstrate, we do show his death until he comes. And so as we prepare to take the Lord's Supper, I want you to be mindful that the disciples came together on the first day of the week. And when they did, they heard a word from the Lord, but they did something that brought them together that that tied them together more than anything else. They took communion. And so as you and your family celebrate the Lord's resurrection on this Sunday through communion, I want you to pause for just a moment and think about what the Lord has done for you. Let's go to God in a word of prayer. Oh, Lord, our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. When we consider who you are and what you have done and what your son sacrificed on that old rugged cross, we can't help but tell you thank you. Lord, thank you for being a God who thinks enough of us that even in our sin, you would lay down your life to save us. Lord, we don't know why you did it. We don't know why you love us so much. But Lord, we're so glad that you do and we're so glad that you did. So as we partake of this Lord's Supper, Lord, help us to take it with clean hands and with a pure heart, remembering what your son sacrificed to save our life. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let every child of God say amen and amen. My brothers and my sisters, it's offering time. Let the church say amen. Uh, It's offering time. We want to thank God for putting us in a position to be able to give. You know that there's We are living in a time where our employment is is up in the air, but we thank God for faithful folk like you who don't mind being faithful in their finances in this season. We want to say, and I want to say on behalf of the Lake Como Church of Christ, as I pastor this church through this pandemic, we appreciate your prayers, we appreciate your partnership, and most of all, we appreciate your participation. And we want to encourage you to continue to give as God has prospered you in in this season. You know, God is a God who has shown even right now that he'll bless you on the mountaintop and he'll bless you on the valley. So as we prepare our hearts and minds to give, I want to share three easy ways for you to give on this morning. If you have T-Mobile or Sprint, you can text Luke 5-1 and any dollar amount to 45777. That's text Luke 5-1 and any dollar amount to 45777. Also, if you don't have T-Mobile Sprint, if you have anybody else, you can text any dollar amount to 817-241-2112. That's 817-241-2112. Finally, you can go to our website at www.lakecomococ.org. Hit that online giving button or or online giving and you'll be able uh, to submit your offering that way. And once again, we want to thank you so much for the way you as members and for those of you who have become cyber members have been sowing into this ministry. It's because of you that we're able to get the word out all across the world, even in the middle of a crisis. So God bless you and thank you. Let's go to God in a word of prayer to ask him to bless our offering. Lord, we come to you with our heads held low, but that, but our hearts high. High because you are God who has helped us in our time of need. Lord, our our hearts are high because you are a God who has prospered us, who continues to open up the windows of heaven and pour our blessings even in this season. And for that, Lord, we will be grateful and forever give you glory. Lord, we thank you for continuing to put food on our tables. We thank you for keeping us employed. We thank you for keeping us whole and we thank you for keeping us healthy. And as we prepare to lift this offering, Lord, we ask that you will bless everyone that is watching and worshiping with us on today, that we might watch and worship, and and especially in this moment of our offering, in a way that, that celebrates who you are and celebrates what you've done. Bless this offering, Lord, that it might serve the purpose of advancing your kingdom that's in the middle of a crisis. Lord, remind us that right now you are still God, which means you are still in control. Lord, we love you and we trust you to do something awesome through this offering. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. You did not create me to worry. 
You did not create me to fear, but you created me to worship daily. So I'ma leave it all right here. Help me say, yeah. You did not create me to worry. Oh, oh, you did not create me to fear, but you created me, you created me to worship daily, so I'm a living all right here. My hands are raised, because I surrender your will was best for me and oh i worship you I worship you because of jehovah Jireh. i bow before the king of kings no more crying no more complaining i believe your word is true and lord you promised me lord you promised never to leave me lonely so this is what i'm going to do no more crying no more, crying, no more complaining i believe i believe your word is true and lord you promised me lord you promised never to leave me lonely so this is what i'm going to do i will trust in you lord i will trust in you lord i will put my trust in you i will trust in you i will trust in you lord i will trust in you lord i will put trust in you i will trust in you lord i will trust in you lord i will put my trust in you did not create me to worry Create me to fear, but you created me. But you created me to worship daily, so I'm a living all right here. My hands are raised because I surrender. Your will, your will is what's best for me. And do I worship you? I worship you because of Jehovah Jireh. I bow before the King of Kings. No more crying. No more crying. No more complaining. I believe. I believe your word is true. And Lord, you promised me. Lord, you promised never to leave me lonely. So this is what I'm going to do. No more crying. No more crying. No more complaining. I believe. I believe your word is true. And Lord, you promised me. Lord, you promised never to leave me lonely. So this is what I'm going to do. I will trust in you, Lord. I will trust in you, Lord. I will put my trust 
I will trust in you. I will trust in you, Lord. I will trust in you, Lord. I will put my trust in you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you, Lord. I will trust in you, Lord. I will put my trust in you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Lord, I will trust in Do you, trust? you, Lord. I will put my trust in you. I will trust in you. Yeah. I will trust in you, Lord. I will trust in you, Lord, I will put my trust in you. You did not create me to worry. Clap your hands in your living room, clap your hands in your kitchen, wherever you are. Go ahead and put your hands together and give God a hand clap of praise. Even in this place this morning, we thank you. We thank God for being our God at a time like this. We thank God for, for waking us up this morning and for starting us on our way. We thank God for keeping cool breath in our lungs and warm blood running in our veins. This morning, we thank God. If you are happy to be in the house of God and God has been good to you, if you made your home the house of God this morning, go ahead and type amen in, even in your living room this morning. We thank you so much for joining us on today. We want you to know that we appreciate your being here. And now it's time for us to get into the word of the Lord on this morning. Go ahead and open your Bibles to Psalm, the 23rd Psalm, Psalm number 23. And we are going to go into God's word. Remember, we are in the middle of a sermon series called Psalms from C minor, Psalms of C in C minor. And so on today, I want to encourage you, before we really get into the Word, make sure you start watch parties. Make sure uh, that you share. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you ring that bell and make sure you subscribe. We are in a business in this season of sharing a message of hope, of providing a source of peace for those who are trying to figure out a pathway forward, trying to figure out how the people of God to, can respond to the COVID-19 crisis uh, in this season. And so, my brothers and my sisters, I want you to know that we are prayerful for you. We want you uh, to be prayerful for us, that God will continue to work his wonder-working power to heal our land uh, and to help us get through this. And so we, we love you and we miss you, but now it's time for a word from the Lord. Open your Bibles now to the 23rd Psalm, the 23rd Psalm, Psalm number 23. And we're going to begin reading at verse number one. I know most of you sitting around your kitchen table got this particular passage of Scripture memorized already, uh, but I want to read it to you this morning. The Bible says from the King James Version, the Lord is is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they do comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup 
runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's go to God in a word of prayer. Good God Almighty, our God, mighty God, we come to you at this moment in time asking that you would show up in this sanctuary and that you would show up in our homes, wherever we may be and however we may be watching. Lord, in this preaching moment, we need you to show up. Lord, show up so that the world might know that you are still God and that you are still in control. Lord, we need you to show up in the hospital rooms. We, we need you to show up in the bedrooms. We need you to show up in the living rooms. Lord, we need you to show up right now, Lord, and send a cure from heaven and heal our land. Lord, in this preaching moment, we ask you to bless the preacher and we ask that you will bless the people who are watching and worshiping with us. Lord, help us that as your word goes forth, that we might be good stewards of your word and have the right type of response so that one day we can reap your reward. Because at the end of our journey, Lord, we want to hear you say, well done. Well done, thou good and faithful servant, into the end to the joys of thy Lord. One of these days, Lord, when we've gone the last mile of the way, when we have breathed our last breath, when we lay our head on our final resting pillow, we want to hear you say, well done. So, Lord, bless us in this preaching moment such that the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts will be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. And all of God's children who agree say amen and amen. My brothers and my sisters, I want to talk to you today from the subject, the proper perspective of God in a pandemic. I want to talk to you about the proper perspective of God in a pandemic. The 23rd Psalm is that psalm. It's that most popular and most used psalm. It's the psalm that you and I remember the most. It's the psalm that makes us feel nostalgic. It's the psalm that we all had to learn to recite way back in Sunday school. It's the psalm that reminds us of sanctuaries with hardwood floors. It, it's the psalm that reminds us of stained glass windows and hardback pews. It's the psalm that reminds us of a time when we didn't have have uh, central AC in our sanctuaries. It, it reminds us of a, of a time a long time ago where if you were one of those highfalutin churches, as a matter of fact, you had to be one of those highfalutin churches even to have ceiling fans in your sanctuary while the rest of us had to deal with funeral home fans. This psalm takes us back to a time when everything seemed like it was working out right. But, but my brothers and my sisters, this is a psalm that, that takes us back to a time when we didn't have children's church and nurseries. And I, I want to pause right there and suggest that we ought to be thankful for the people of God who serve in nurseries and in children's churches in the 21st century. But I remember a time when children had to sit in the sanctuary with their parents and they didn't send them off down the hallway, but they sat them in front of them. And all it took was a look to keep them in line. And I I wonder how many of you watching uh, this morning remember that long walk that one Sunday back to the restroom when that look wasn't good enough. I know y'all remember what I'm talking about. We, we cried all the way back to the bathroom. No, mama. No, I don't want a whooping. But the truth of the matter is the whooping taught you how to respect and have reverence for the sanctuary, for the house of God that I'm afraid we don't have today. But this song, my brothers and my sisters, this this psalm, the 23rd psalm, takes us back to a time that makes us feel good. This is the psalm 
that lifts us up when our heads hang low. This, this is the psalm that calms our fears. This is the psalm that comforts us when we're grieving, that gives us courage in the face of c- catastrophe. This is the psalm that gives us consolation in a time of crisis. This is the psalm that causes us to pause for celebration even before elevation. This is our favorite psalm. The only problem that comes along with this being our favorite psalm this morning is that our favorite psalm is also the psalm that we are most familiar with. My brothers and sisters, you know what happens when we get, here it is, too familiar with anybody or anything. All too often, familiarity breeds contempt. Perhaps, my brothers and sisters, we know it so well that it has lost its ability to allure us. We've come so casual with it that, as a consequence, it has lost its ability to both powerfully and mysteriously fascinate and attract us. In a word, in a phrase, I'm afraid that in, in April 2020, I'm concerned that we've taken for granted Psalm 23. But the truth of the matter is, that this is one of the most, if not the most powerful and prolific passages of Scripture in all of the Hebrew Bible. I mean, consider it, my brothers and sisters, the first line alone leaps all the way back to Genesis and lunges all the way forward to the Gospels. This, though, is not your everyday run-of-the-mill psalm. This is not a prayer psalm. It's not a lament psalm. But the 23rd psalm is a psalm that puts us in a place of privilege. David is not praying in this psalm. He is not asking God to do something for him in this psalm. But David is rejoicing in what the Lord has already done and what the Lord is doing. I want to pause right here and, and put us on a praise break to suggest to somebody who is watching right now, you ought to type amen, you ought to wave your hand at me because when we sit in a space where we have time to reflect and like the old preacher would say, look back over our lives and see what the Lord has done, you and I will admit in the sanctuary this Sunday morning that the Lord has been good to us, that he has brought us from a mighty long way. This is a confident song. This confidence that David exudes in the 23rd Psalm comes from one word, trust. My brothers and my sisters, the psalmist David had learned to trust the Lord because he had been through some trying times with the Lord. And every time David went through a trying time, the Lord showed up and the Lord showed out. He showed up and he showed out. Let me say it one more time for the Holy Ghost. He showed up and he showed out. He showed the world through David that God has the power to perform whatever he has promised. And I want to I want to pause and and pose a question to the people of God watching me preach this sermon on Sunday morning. Have you tried my Jesus? Have you tried my Lord? I, I got to ask you that question this morning because I am a living witness that when you try him, you can trust him. I said, when you try him, you can trust him. The Bible says, trust in the Lord. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Have you tried my Jesus? If you have tried him, then you can trust him. The Bible says, some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. Have you tried my Jesus? Have you tried my Lord. Why, preacher? Because I know that when you try him, you will learn how to trust him. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Like David said, church, I believe we have a few folks sitting around their cell phones, sitting watching their computers, or even on TV who are who are watching and saying, I have tried King Jesus, and he He's all right. If you know he's all right, go ahead and type he's all right in your living room right now. My brothers and my sisters, I want you to know that the God we serve is all right. 
The God we serve is a good God. The God that we serve is an on time God. The God that we serve is mighty God. The God that we serve, he's all right. So my brothers and my sisters, as we begin to unpack this particular passage of scripture, let us slow down and look at this old song with new eyes for the first time in a long time. My brothers, this is a psalm of confidence about the king of glory. Brothers and sisters, you've heard this before. Perception is reality. That means that perception is everything. Well, the truth of the matter is that there might be a modicum of validity to that statement, but if we drill down on it, what you and I will discover is that perception is actually not everything because your perception is based on your perspective. And on this morning, what I want to do is provide for you three proper perspectives to perceive God in a pandemic. The first proper perspective of God in a pandemic is that God is a personal God. Let me try that one more time. The way you ought to see God in this season is that you ought to see God as a personal God. David starts by making what some might consider a strange statement. He begins with the Lord is my shepherd. Did y'all hear that? I want you to underline it. I want you to write it down. He says, let me try it one more time and put emphasis in the right place. The Lord is my shepherd. Let me try it for the third time because I think you missed it. I want to make sure you get it before we go in and forth. Father, the Lord is my shepherd. David uses this personal possessive pronoun concerning the Lord. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. He's mine. He, he takes on the mantra of a four-year-old. It's mine. It's mine. Let me unpack this. David starts, though, he says, it's the, 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 the Lord. Did y'all see that? He says, the Lord. The Hebrew word for the word that David uses in this text is Yahweh. Yahweh is the God of Israel. Yahweh is the omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient God. He is the almighty, magnificent, and transcendent God. He is the infinite, preeminent, and all-sufficient God. He is the long-suffering, sanctifying, and liberating God. He is the high and holy God, and yet David says that God God is my shepherd. Good God Almighty. I wish I had some help in the sanctuary. Maybe you would help me sitting on your, on your couch this morning to know that that God is my shepherd. That's good news this morning. That's good news to know that the child of, for the child of God to know that we serve a God who is not so high that he can't hear us. That we serve a God that is not so holy that he can't help us. That, that we serve a God who is not so nuanced that he cannot meet our needs. That he's not so infinite that he cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. That he's not so awesome that he is not aware of our afflictions. That he's not so sovereign that we can't speak to him, that he's not so transcendent that we can't touch him, that he's not so regal that we can't reach him, that he, that he is that God, but that God, David says, is my shepherd. David says the Lord is my shepherd, and that makes him a personal God. And, and that's why we pray and praise like we do. Oh, Lord, our God, my God, mighty God. Let me say that so you can pick it up when I put it down. We pray, oh, Lord, our God, my God, mighty God. And when you think about him being our God and my God, at the same time, you will know that we serve an all awesome God, that we serve an incredible God who deserves incredible praise. The second proper perspective of God in a pandemic is that the Lord is a providing God. David makes this clear. He makes three statements that speak to three different needs that the Lord provides for us at all times in any place. First, he says, I shall not want. Let me suggest to you that when you read that through your anachronistic lenses, that God, David, is not suggesting that God is going to give you a 74-inch screen plasma 4K high-def television. 
That's not what he's suggesting. What he's suggesting is, is that God won't give you everything you want to have, but that you won't want for anything that you need. I feel like you ought to write that down, that God is not obligated to give you everything you want to have, but God has promised that you won't ever be in a position to want anything that you need because he is your shepherd. David said, when the Lord is my shepherd, I don't need anything. He says, when the Lord is your shepherd, you can be sure that you will have everything you need. He says, because God is your shepherd. You won't lack for anything. Why? Why? I'm so glad you asked because because God promised that he would supply every one of your needs. And when you think about the kind of God that is so rich and so wealthy, that has so much that is that, that can provide every one of your needs, you will know that you serve an awesome God. Then he says he will he will feed you in green pastures. Church, that's nourishment. Then David moves from nourishment to refurbishment. David says that I, he will restore your soul. My brothers and my sisters, it's good news to know that in a season where our souls get weary, that God has a ready word in season for those who are weary to lift them up. David says that God, when he is your shepherd, will give you nourishment. He will give you, uh, he will also give you refreshment and then refurbishment. Brothers and sisters, that's the kind of God that we serve, the kind of God that will make sure that he provides everything you need. And if that wasn't good enough for you, if that wasn't good enough for you, that he would provide nourishment and refreshment and refurbishment, that, that God would prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. I like that kind of God who, who knows enough about me that I will have enemies. See, you listening to me preach this morning and you mad because folks don't like you. You mad because folks are talking about you. You mad because folks mistreat you. Let me tell you something. You need some enemies in your life because it's hard for God to prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies when you ain't got no enemies in the first place. My mama used to say it like this, my brothers and my sisters, if you have not run into the devil, y'all probably going in the same direction. Y'all y'all miss that. Don't, don't miss that. Listen, you got to go toward the enemy if you want to defeat the enemy. And when you running toward the enemy, know that this battle is not yours. This battle is the Lord's. And when you know that this battle is the Lord's, you'll know that you serve a God who is both a prov provider and he is a protector. My brothers and my sisters, the, the final proper perspective of God in the pandemic is that the Lord is a protecting God. Yeah. I'm almost done. But before I let you go, let me tell you that God will protect you, like David said, in a valley. That God will protect you in death. That God will protect you in the face, hear me, of adversity. And God will protect you in the face of adversaries. See, sometimes it's not a person, but it's a place or a thing. But what David is saying is it doesn't matter how deep it is, God will meet you there. It doesn't matter how tall the mountain is, God will meet you there. It doesn't matter how dark your space is, God will meet you there and he will protect you. He says, you and I don't have a reason to fear because God is with us. I told you last Sunday that we need to develop, watch this, a theology of preposition. That is, we need to be thankful to see, study, and know that we serve a God who is both with us and for us. Run that back and play it again, preacher. You need to develop a theology, hear me, of preposition. That is, that we see and study and serve a God who is both with us and for us. And that means that when I'm in the valley, God is with me and for me. When I face 
face death, God is with me and for me. And when I face a pandemic, God is with me and for me. And I'm getting ready to close and I'm trying not to get happy. But if it wasn't enough for God to be with me and for me, he dispatched two twin angels named goodness and mercy. And he said, even if I do get tired, I've got these twins following you all the days of my life. I got to let you go, Lake Como. But before I do, is there anybody sitting in your home right now that can say it with me? Surely, surely, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and that's why when this whole thing is over you're not going to be able to keep me out of the sanctuary like when David came out of his trouble trial and tribulation the first place he went was back to the sanctuary he said surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will let me try it one more time I will I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, all the days of my life. I wonder is there anybody in your living room right now that will go ahead and give God some glory, some honor, and some praise for the proposition of meeting him back in his place. My brothers and my sisters, I want to let you know today that God is a personal God. That God is a provided God and that God is a protecting God. When you look at Psalm 23 again, I want you to see it from the perspective of a child of God. David uses this imagery, this analogy, this metaphor of a sheep and shepherd. And here it is, sheep always find themselves falling into trouble. Sheep always find themselves running out of food. Sheep always find themselves, not just with trouble on the outside, but trouble on the inside. But a good shepherd, a good shepherd, and how many of you can type amen even right now because you know we serve a good shepherd? A good shepherd knows when you're hurting on the inside and he knows when you're hurting on the outside. A good shepherd can see when you're hungry before you ever get hungry and he will provide for you. A good shepherd knows your name. And my brothers and my sisters, I came today to tell you that the Lord is our shepherd and we shall not want. If you're watching and you don't know our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ as your good shepherd. Let me tell you that he wants to be your shepherd. He wants to be your Lord and he wants to be your savior. And if you're sitting in your living room right now and you don't know who Jesus is, let me tell you about a man who was born in Bethlehem. He didn't get to a palace, but he was born in a barn. The story says that they wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger, His mother and his father raised him to the best of their ability. And by the time he was a grown man, he said, I must be about my father's business. He lived perfectly before men. He performed miracle after miracle, sign after sign, and wonder after wonder. And yet, they still persecuted him. They prosecuted him for crime he did not commit and crucified him on an old rugged cross. The truth of the matter is, they didn't take his life. He laid it down. And he did it because he loved me. John 3, 16. And I'm done. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. My question is, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God? If you do, we're going to encourage you to make a decision to change your life. That's what the Bible calls repentance. Then we'll take a confession from you for you to acknowledge that Jesus is who he said he was. And we'll baptize you today for the remission of your sins. You got to believe that God loved you so much that he laid down his life, went to hell and back. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. But on the third day, he got up with all power in his hand. And it's that power that's going to help you get through this pandemic. 
Let me pray for you. Good God Almighty, we love you. We worship and adore you. We thank you for being such an awesome God. We thank you for being a personal God, a providing God, and a protecting God. We thank you for being a God even over this pandemic. So, Lord, now that we know that, give us peace, sweet peace, that surpasses all understanding. Lord, as we get ready to bring this worship service to a close, remind us in a very real sense that you will always be with us, that you will never forsake us, that you will always be with us even until the end. Now, Lord, may the words of our mouths and meditation of our hearts, we hope, trust, and pray that they have been acceptable in your sight. May the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us now and forevermore. Let all of God's children who agree say amen and amen. Listen, Lake Como. Listen, friends and family of Lake Como, everybody watching on this morning. We appreciate your being here with us. We want to know, want to let you know that we love you and we look forward to seeing you again. Y'all stay safe and keep the faith. May God bless you and may he keep you.